Welcome to the Sports Card Lessons Podcast. I'm your host, Big Ken. Whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on a streaming service, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. You'll be notified whenever I drop any new content. Welcome, and thanks for being here. How is everyone doing? I have my voice back somewhat. It's not 100% back, but it's much better than it was uh, on the last episode. So, you know, this time of year, you're either all about the holidays or you can't wait for them to be over. Before I jumped back into the hobby, I was one of those that just wanted the holidays to be over, hated the holidays. Now, I find it to be a great time of year to start planning for next year. It seems like December in the hobby has become one of the busier months of the year for me. You know, usually everyone is winding down at the end of the year, looking forward to time off and celebrating and doing all this stuff. But me, I find myself ramping up for the end of the year, making plans for the new year, you know, booking tables, you know, for, for shows, you know, it's, it's everybody's putting out, you know, their shows. So you need to jump on them and, 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 you know, figure out what shows you're going to do, you know, get the tables. Um, I'm booking tables for shows. I'm booking hotel rooms for shows that I have to travel to. Uh, even, even there's one thing I talked about the last two years, right. Is December is booking the hotel for the national, you know, the next year it's going to be in Cleveland. So I've already booked the hotel room for there. And, and it's something that I've done the last couple of December's. Uh, and, and, and I say this now just to remind everybody, because, you know, what happens is all of a sudden, June, July, people come around and they're all like, oh, no, I'm trying to get a hotel and I'm staying like, you know, miles and miles away or the rooms are like so expensive. So there's no time like the present. Right. Jump right in nice and early. You know, get 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 your room reserved for Cleveland if you're going. Uh, some of the shows I've already booked for next year, uh, January 13th, I'm doing the last show, uh, Sea Caucus, New Jersey. Uh, and, uh, later that month in January, the 26th to the 8th is a uh, culture collision in Atlanta. Uh, I'm going to be set up there with my guys from Crosstown cardboard podcast, uh, Craig, New York city sports cards and Carmen at Carmine at Carmine's cards. Um, the last time we were all together was Chicago. So I'm looking forward to, uh, going down there and, uh, putting the three amigos behind a table down there at culture collision. Uh, February, I booked Mohegan Sun, uh, March, Foxwoods. Um, I know Card Vault will have a, they're the Foxwoods one, but they'll have a number of destination ones coming up too. So uh, I'll be able to jump on board there. Uh, and, and maybe, possibly, depending on where my hockey inventory is at, um, I may make a trip back to Toronto Expo in April. I know I'll be doing a uh, Chantilly show. Uh, I did that last year in June. Uh, I know there's an April and June show, so I may do one or both. Um, right up to the national, right? I mean, all of a sudden we're booking shows and, you know, there's going to be more new shows that show up, but, you know, booking six months in advance now and, and, this is what we have to do. This is that time here. If you wait to the last minute, start waiting for tables or stuff just gets sold out and uh, you get put on waiting lists and then you're, you end up sp spending extra if you're trying to buy, you know, case space at a table. So, uh, you know, I just like to jump on it early. Um, what am I going to be selling? <laughs> because right now I know my, my show inventory is low. Uh, I just put orders together. I sent an order out to SGC, uh, all women's soccer. So here's the thing. Like, I, I'm not going to be selling the women's soccer, Not probably not till the national, you know, till you know, late, late June, July, when the Olympics are coming. The Olympics are at the end of July into August. Um, so I'm hoping, right, our women's team who, who, you know, didn't, didn't, show that well at the world cup that they're going to bounce back in a big way for the Olympics. So, uh, 
you know, last year at the national, I crushed it with the women's soccer. So I'm hoping this year too. So I'm, I've selected a bunch of cards that I've sent out and it's probably, it's way too early because SGC, my first time sending an order to them, but I mean, five to 10 days, you get the stuff back. But if you remember, you know, in the last few weeks, I've really hit some huge PC cards that were all raw. Uh, the, uh, you know, the Trinity Rodman, the, uh, the purple auto, uh, two of the uh, variation, the same cards, but the volume one variation from 2021, uh, the, uh, the redemption auto from 2021. So the, these cards were all raw and I really wanted to get these cards slabbed up. So I figure why I'm sending them anyways. I had these other cards. I'll send them all, get a nice order out there and come back. And, 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 and who knows? I mean, the spring when, when the, uh, you know, the NWSL league picks up again, there may be, you know, there may be some market for those as well. Uh, you know, and another nice thing too, is that because of the world cup, the women's world cup, a lot of these products, you know, just released over the last few months where, you know, from all different countries, right? So you're, you're buying, you know, these hobby boxes and the blasters and you're, you're pulling people from, every country. So it's kind of nice because now the Olympics are coming back up again. So it's not only we're just, I'm doing American players. I have players from other countries too. So, um, you know, that's going to, that, that's going to be nice, you know, to be able to have those cards too, because either the same players are going to be playing at the Olympics for their country. Same thing. Right. Um, I have a pretty big order I'm getting ready to send to PSA, which is mostly baseball. And I talked a little bit about this. This is like, this is kind of a new thing for me. Now, these are cards that I, I ripped and I saved and I pulled them out. And they're players that are doing well now. Um, I've gone through them to see which ones were actually gradable. So uh, I'm putting that order together. It's mostly baseball, but I have some pop culture in there and I actually have some football cards in there too, some cards, some raw cards that I've recently picked up. And I really had to make a decision. I probably could have sold these cards now, raw, you know, put them in a, in, uh, you know, in a one touch and thrown them in my case. And I probably could have sold them. But, you know, what's going to happen? The person who buys them, I've looked at these cards, they're very gradable. The person who buys them is probably going to end up grading them. So why wouldn't I just grade them? It's not something that I need to sell immediately. I need my turnover. I need my money back immediately on it. So some of these cards I'm going to send off to PSA and they're probably going to be holds, right? Because, you know, when you send the bulk order in there, it takes what, 65 days to get it back. It took me much longer in the last one. So, I mean, I'm hoping this one will go smooth because I need the, I really need the baseball back for spring training. Right. Um, but the football, I don't mind putting these ones aside if they grade well, uh, you know, they're players that are, you know, I'm not prospecting this year's or last year's rookies, you know, they're, they're, players who have proven themselves, you know, some Joe Burrow cards, things like that. So I'd be excited about just holding those, uh, you know, holding on, letting them grade well and come back and just holding those for next year. Um, the pop culture stuff. I mean, that stuff could go right in the case as soon as it comes out. There's really no season for the pop culture stuff to put out there. Uh, I'm also working on three, five row boxes of singles, foot, one football, one soccer, one hockey, um, I've been working on these for a while. I, I, I brought these out, uh, during the summer to a couple shows. Uh, and I actually have brought some of it. I brought to the national, right. And brought back. And then I've kind of put them aside and just rebuilding those boxes now. So this is going to be something that, uh, I'm going to be excited to put out. I'll start, you know, I'll start with the last show. I'll throw them out at the last show and I'll have them for Mohegan and Foxwoods. These shows, the singles boxes do very well at, I always talk about know the show. And, uh, uh, I think it's going to be a good move for me to have these, uh, these single boxes and, and especially like a singles box is a football, right? So, you know, January, February, March, people are going to be happy to, to, to grab these cards, you know, to, to, to try to get them graded, uh, and, and have them to turn around June, July, uh, that type of thing. Uh, this time of year, December, I'm also setting goals for next year. Um, I've talked about this a number of times, but I want to travel to a show I haven't been before. Now, I've already set up uh, Culture Collision 
uh, to go there in Atlanta. So there's a show I've never been to before. So I'm excited to go there. Um, I've talked about a number of these shows that I've been to already, but now I think I want to find one more that I haven't been to yet. And that's why I kind of talk about the Toronto Expo and, and my hockey cards, because I could probably move my hockey cards online if I wanted. I probably wouldn't do as well as I did in person. Um, but I know there's, you know, a lot of big shows that come up in the spring and early, you know, the late, I should say late winter, early, early and during the spring. And that's kind of right, right when the Toronto Expo is. So I may plan on going there or I may plan on, you know, selling those cards off somewhere else and hitting another show because I, I really think, um, with the hockey, you know, some of the, some of the, you know, some of the hockey cards that I'm selling, I've been to a lot of these local shows and really haven't sold many of them. And the ones that people ask me at, they're very low ball numbers and there's, you know, players, you know, it's a funny thing with, with hockey, you know, a player gets an upper body injury and they're going to be off for a couple of weeks, you know, and you go to a show and people are like, Oh, that guy's hurt. Oh, how could you be selling it? Well, you know, upper body, body, you know, it's not like he tore his ACL and he's out for the season. You know, it's, it's, they're more undisclosed injuries. So it's, uh, it, it's, it's tough around here to move, to move the hockey. And again, when I went to Toronto, it, it was probably the easiest place to move hockey. So we'll see, we'll see what happens with that. And I know a few of you, some of your listeners have sent me information on shows that are great, that really look great. So I just, I'm just got to go through and see what makes the most sense. Uh, and another thing I like to do, I mean, with the goal setting and going somewhere I've been before, I get to meet up with listeners I've never met in person. There's a number of a lot of listeners that I, I message with weekly, you know, or biweekly or monthly or whatever, I'm just messaging back and forth when things happen. And it's just people I've never met before. And it's so great to go out to shows. And I talked about this out at the national going out there and meeting all these people and this coming up and saying, Hey, I'm so-and-so we talk all the time. I'm like, Oh yeah. You know? So I, I really enjoy that. And, and that, that becomes, you know, almost the forefront when you're looking at a show to pick a show to go to, like it needs to be convenient. I need to be able to, it's nice for me to be able to take a nonstop flight to somewhere to get to where I'm going. And I have to worry about changing planes and a, and a whole lot of, you know, jumping through hoops to get somewhere. But another thing is just to get there and be able to, you know, know some people there and, you know, talk to them and, you know, help you out too, you know, just being local and knowing the area. So uh, I really enjoy that. Uh, another goal I have become a better buyer. Um, I feel my buying has been all over the place. Um, I get into situations where I can really buy, I really buy something well and other situations I think I'm buying well and I don't really buy well. And, um, I listened to Craig, uh, New York City Sports Cars, him and Carmine at Carmine's Cars on, on their podcast and a couple of episodes ago. And he was talking. Uh, he set up with me uh, at the Hofstra show. And uh, he was talking about he had a, a couple cards that he was going to move that he had bought. And he at the at the end of it, he almost just sold the card for what he paid for it. And he said. You're probably saying to yourself, why would you go through all that work to not make any money or only make a few bucks, right? But sometimes you're just excited to get your money back out of a card because you realize at the you realize at the time you were thinking, wow, this was a great card and probably a lot of good things are going to happen with this card. And then all of a sudden you realize maybe that wasn't such a great card to get because there's, you know, if I'm trying to move it, people aren't looking for it. Uh, and then you get a buyer for it and say, you know, say, yeah, I'm just going to make up a price. You pay 200 for it and, and you've got a 250 price tag. And the guy's like, Hey, we take 250 for it. I mean, you, sometimes you don't even say, ah, you know, take it for this and let me make a few. You're just like, okay, yeah, that's fine. I can do that. Right. So why, why take a chance of jeopardizing something when you're just happy to get rid of it? Because now you could just take that money and say, well, I really like to put it into this card instead or something like that. So 
So things like that that come up and and as as you know as a dealer as a buyer as a seller I mean we run into these things all the time. If anyone tells you they're 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 cleaning up on every card they buy I mean I I would say you know where do I sign up to take lessons to do exactly what you do because I I think for most of us you know there it's a percentage of you know cards that do really well for us and cards that just we we're, we're lucky to get our money out of them sometimes so um just to become a better buyer you know just to be able to you know develop you know like develop new relationships with people that allow me to you know where I can buy better but I could buy more right so I could fill my cases up a little more with with what's selling. Uh, I know a lot of people, I set up with a lot of people that they have people coming to them all the time, calling them or saying, oh, I'm getting so many calls, all these people, or everybody's trying to move cards and they want to sell their collections and all that stuff. I, 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 I'm hoping that I could start getting those calls. And that's kind of what I mean by a better buyer, like just develop better relationships where I've got more people reaching out to me saying, hey, you know, I've got this and I'm trying to move it. Uh, another goal is grow the podcast, right? Just grow the podcast, you know, just make it better. <laughs> I'm not going to say I know how to make it better. I just want to make it better, better content, more listeners, more subscribers, right? Get some more interviews and better interviews, you know, just get people on here that people want to listen to, you know, that have a, have a story to tell or, or is doing something that, you know, it, makes people want to listen. Um, you know, the goal is always to grow the podcast, right? It's, you know, you hear people say all the time, there, you know, there, there, there's, there's no retirement here. There's no 401k plan or, you know, there, there's, there's no payment at all. Right. I did. I just do all, I just do this to do it. Right. There's, I don't get paid to do anything. I pay to set all this stuff up and the, my equipment and my software and all that stuff. I do that. So I do it because I love doing it. Right. I, I and I'm happy to do it. And because I love doing it, I just want to figure out how to do it even better. Right. Um, I even bought, I recently, I just ordered some new equipment, right? So I have some new equipment coming in. I don't know if it'll make the season finale next week, but it'll definitely be there for the, uh, for the beginning of the new season, right? Some new equipment, just hey, sharpen things up, make things a little bit better, you know, keep people coming. Uh, another thing I do, which I think is really big, is I just set some hobby goals for myself. Uh, last year, I set some big goals and I achieved all of them. And I'll talk about that more in the first episode of the new season. Um, but I encourage everyone to set some hobby goals for 2024. You know, I, I do it this time of year, right? Because it's fresh and I do it. And when I do it, I, I, you know, I've been doing it for a few years. And the first time I did it, I, I set some goals that I said to myself when I set them, I'm never going to achieve them. I'm going to put a couple easy ones out there, but then I'm going to, these other ones that I would really like to achieve you know, as far as, you know, acquiring PC, you know, cards for my PC, things like that, which it, uh, it's not going to happen. And and what I realized at the end of the first year that I, I almost succeeded in everything, all the goals I put out there, um, you would be surprised. And if you think back a year ago and then two years ago, you'd be surprised how much changes in a year and something that seems so out of out of reach that all of a sudden, six months, eight months, sometimes even one month from now, all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, I can't believe this is available. I can't believe I'm getting this. And I and 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 when it got to last year to set for 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 this year that we're in now, I set some hefty goals. I put, I said, I'm putting it, I'm putting it out there to the universe, right? I'm gonna put it on paper, I'm gonna put, throw it out to the universe and say, this is my goal. And and it took all a whole year to be able to acquire, you know, the biggest card that I was looking for. And it was, and, and, and up until that point that I set that goal, it had never even been, I didn't even know 
I well, I knew who had one, but I had no idea anybody would be selling selling the cars. Um, e- even even if I could even afford it or how much it would be, because I had an idea of what it would be, and I just thought to myself, "There's so few of these; there'll never be an opportunity." And it took a year, and not not only did I end up with the card, right, but it ended up being very achievable uh, and very affordable. So set goals for yourself, put it out there to the universe, right? Put it out there, say, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I want. And it's okay if you don't. It's okay if the year comes and and you made a list of five and you only got four. Well, that was four more than you had before you started, right? But you, you I'm telling you, you'll be surprised. And if you do it, um, if you make those goals and you do it and you achieve them and you're surprised, send me a note, say, let me know, Hey, I did it. And I achieved my goals because somebody did that to me once and I'm doing it to you now. Uh, last thing I want to talk about, and this, you know, this goes on, you know, the buying as well. Um, you know, I've been buying online. I've been having some better results. And what I found is when I have a third person put me together with the seller, it's always been a great experience, right? And I think what what happens is when that happens is people are saying, hey, this guy, you know, he went out of his way to say, hey, you know, get these people together. People will really communicate as best they can you know, even if this, even if this, the deal doesn't get made, the communication uh, it was really good. Uh, and and as I say that, I want to tell all the listeners that have, you know, found me Trinity Rodman cards and sent me messages and sent other people to me saying, "Hey, so and so says they heard they listen to your podcast and that you're a Trinity Rodman person. These are the cards I have. I may not end up buying them, but I'm going to take a look at them and we're going to price them out. I'm going to talk about it. Uh, I'm excited to do that. I'm always excited to look at those cards. So recently I had someone reach out to me that I know, I know with a, with a beautiful Trinity Rodman card that he was selling. I have the same card. It, there's, there's only, there's only a pop three on the cards. So I have one, he has one, and somebody else has one. Um, and he said, hey, I, I want to sell this card. What do you think? And I said, well, I'm interested. So, you know, I didn't want to make him a low ball offer because I knew him, right? So when, when deciding how I was going to do this, I said, Instead of saying, I'm going to go low and then let him come back high and we'll negotiate in the middle, like most people do, right? We'll negotiate back and forth. I just kind of wrote it out and said, you know, here's the last, some of the last sales on the raw, and this is what this one is. And this is, you know, the, and I'm taking this and I'm averaging all these prices and I'm multiplying because, you know, what the grade is on the card. And, and I felt. I can't, and I wrote it all out and I said, and I should step back a minute because he said to me, you make me an offer. Like he goes, I know, you know, the market, I know, you know, the cards, I know, you know, where the market is, make me an offer. Like I, like I, I don't need, you know, to get be, be way over on this card. Just make me a solid offer on the card. So I said, okay, so this is, this is how I did. I, and I went through the whole thing and I showed him my little math on there. And I said, this is what I feel the card is. The card is worth, right? I, I, I may not be a hundred percent where it is, but then I went up, you know, like I rounded up almost $65 more up because I figured there's going to be some shipping and stuff involved. And I said, this is what I think is a fair offer. And I sent it to him. Now, this is somebody who's saying to me, you know, the market, make me, make me a, a, you know, a solid offer. And I sent them that offer. And then he referenced back the price I paid for my card, which was a few hundred dollars more, which was during world cup, which was during um, the national. Uh, and if you go back and listen to my episode, I said I was so excited to be able to buy this card 
that I know I overpaid somewhat on the card. But I was okay with that because it was a card I wanted to acquire and it was never going anywhere else. So in a situation like that, if I'm buying a card for my own PC, it's my decision, it's, right? It's up to me what I want to pay for it. If I, if I want to pay overpay for it, that's fine because what's going to happen is I'm going to say no and then I'm going to leave and I'm going to say to myself, oh my God, you let this, this card that you really wanted go and for a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars and you didn't just buy the car we've all done this right and then you're kicking yourself the whole way i didn't want to be that guy i don't care i'll pay a few a little extra because i really really wanted that card and i just kind of explained that to him too and i said but here's my offer i think it's solid let me know what you think absolutely ghosted me ghosted me waiting. I mean, we're, we're in this conversation, this messaging conversation back and forth and back and forth. And he just ghosted me. And I said, well, maybe he's just thinking about it. Uh, so I waited till the next day, 24 hours go by. He doesn't come back. And I know he's read the message. You can see on Instagram. Nothing. I said, all right, give him another day. Two days go by. I send the question mark. And within minutes, I could see he reads the question mark. And he doesn't even respond to me. And this is not the first time this happened to me. And and that's why I'm bringing this up. It's like almost as if, I, I mean, I can't do a whole show. And maybe I could do a whole show on hobby etiquette. And maybe I'm wrong. And if I'm wrong, so please. Put it in the comments, go on YouTube or message me or whatever. If I'm wrong, tell me. I just think it's etiquette to respond to somebody. If somebody is has a decency, whether, you, I mean, I know this person, but even if you don't know the person, because it's happened to me a couple of times with people I don't know. If somebody has the decency to give you an offer on the card, just respond. I mean, it's not that hard. I don't understand. I don't understand why. People just think it's okay. Like, I'm not going to respond to this person. That's it. You know, at the very least, say, hey, no thanks. Or here's my counter offer. Or I was hoping to sell it for more. Or you're way too low. Or I sold the card to somebody else. Anything. Just freaking respond. I respond to every message I get. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. I probably get eight to 12 messages a day, some, some days more, some days less. Right. And, and some of them are from people that I've never spoken with before who are list listeners of the podcast or have a question on a card or every, every message I get, I respond, respond to, I don't care where it comes from. Why? Because it's the right thing to do. It's courteous. Somebody's taking time out of their day, right. To ask you, ask me a question. I'm going to, I'm going to respond to it, right? Just courteous. Just, just let people know where they stand. I, I just find that infuriating that you'd be in the middle of messaging somebody. And as soon as a dollar figure comes out and the, the people ghost you, I, I, I just don't understand. And if I'm wrong, please let me know. If there, there's something I'm missing here, please let me know. But I don't think I'm wrong. I think it's just common common courtesy to respond to somebody, especially yeah, like I've had cards for sale that I've put on uh, like uh, uh, on Instagram and on Facebook and stuff like that. And I put a card up for like $700 and someone's offered me $300 on the card right? There's no way if I'm asking 700, there's no way I'm taking 300, but I'll respond back to them. I'll be like, no, we're way too far apart. You know, I, I, if you want to give me an offer closer to seven, I would consider it, but we're way, but I'm responding. This person knows where, where I'm at. Not like this person's thinking, well, maybe he didn't get my, my offer, you know? No, he knows I got it. And I responded to him. I don't know. It, it just bothers me when people do that. Oh, last thing on a positive note, right? I was excited to see my local Plainville show. Our local show here in Plainville is doing a Friday night holiday show this Friday. How awesome is that? I mean, the Friday before Christmas and I'm all now I know when the, all these local shows come, 
for whatever reason, knowing there's a show this Friday night, I've been more excited about this show than any other local show that I've been to in a while. So uh, I, I almost think there should be more more Friday night shows. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know why I'm so excited to go to a Friday night show, but I'm excited to go to a Friday night show. And if I feel that way, I bet you other people would feel that way too. I, I may, maybe we should start working on a Friday night show somewhere. Maybe people would want to want to do that, get excited for that. Maybe maybe because this, this seems different, right? So, well, this show's on Saturday and this show's on Sunday and it's 10 to 5 and 9 to, well, you know, it's a it's like a, I don't know, it's like a happy hour show, right? Like a, you know, a, a, a 5 to 8 or a 5 to 9 show. Anyways, I'm excited. I'm going to be there. So you're looking for me Friday night. That's where you're going to find me at that Plain Bill show. Uh, I want to wish everybody a happy holiday. Whatever you celebrate, enjoy the holiday. Spend time with the family and friends. Uh, relax. Have fun. Set those goals. Uh, I will not drop a Monday episode. Monday is Christmas. Uh, I'll be send, spending, uh, you know, just time with the family. Uh, but I will be back next week with the season three finale. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. And if you like what you hear, please like, definitely subscribe. And most importantly, tell a friend and spread the word. And until next time, take care of yourselves and everyone around you.